Hey guys, Pete Ramsey here, HVAC Greatness on behalf of Kelly McKay, the HVAC millionaire. Kelly, welcome to tonight's podcast. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, welcome to you. What do what do we call this show, anyways, Pete? I don't even know. <laughs> well, welcome to your life. <laughs> so uh yeah, man. Uh so I hope you've been having a good week. I've been watching your posts out there. You put some good stuff out there, some good content, man. I'm loving it, loving it. Good, yeah. Can I talk about that just real quick? Would you? I saw a short video about, and it was somebody who's very prominent in our industry and very looked up to, and he made the comment, and he could have just, it could mean nothing. Um, so I'm not trying to take it out of proportion. You know, I I know the guy has a good heart, and he's he does really great things in the industry. And who am I to even say anything? Here However. Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> says he says <clears throat> you know he, he he says something like well if you don't even you know if you don't have a brand when you first start a business maybe you shouldn't be starting a business and i thought you know what buddy you forget you're forgetting where you came from because you didn't start with a brand you didn't start with no fancy twenty thousand dollar brand you know so anyhow that really got under my skin i thought man that's not the message that i will ever talk about um and it could have just been a, a mistake and i'm like i said i'm not trying to, but man it got under my skin does that so kind I had of to talk bother you i'm just wondering a little bit just because i feel like people lose touch with where they came from and that's you got to think about there's somebody out there who doesn't have the resources but they're very resourceful and they're going to make it happen just like you did when you started yeah yeah, like I'm not trying to step on other people's dreams by, by saying like, maybe you shouldn't even start it. You know, if you don't have a nice fancy brand, like you probably shouldn't even start business. No, oh. screw that. That's yeah. Not, I don't Life think. is a series of progressions and improvements and we all have to start somewhere. And you and I actually talked about this before we hit recording. We started off as technicians and this, you know, you got to know where you come from. And I got a lot of stuff wrong in the beginning. I don't know about you. And branding oh, is one of them for sure. I still get stuff wrong, Pete. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, you know, it it's through it's through failures that ultimate the ultimate success comes through. I mean, you, you don't you don't need this. Is what I love about you, and and I know that you can appreciate about me. Back, we're not out there saying, "Look at us. We build this, this did that, did the other." What what makes us a qualified? to teach on this is if we've made all the mistakes, we've got all the cuts, we've got all the scars, you know, we, 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 we've been through this stuff and you know, that's how you learn. Um, we didn't have, like you said, podcasts, we didn't have these resources, even something like this, YouTube, we didn't have that. What we had was, you know, maybe a few local chamber of commerce mentor possibilities. People that didn't even understand our industry um, or in my case, thank goodness that train that I had become a trained dealer was hosting, uh, in our area for those who would pay the money, a business consultant who was already an expert to teach us how to do things. And that's how Ron Smith came to be my first mentor. And I sat in his class and buddy, it changed my world. So we need help. But we don't need the yeah. arrogance to come with it. That's for sure. No, we do need help. And um, thankfully, I mean, how wonderful is it that there is so many resources out there for people to to absorb and to learn from? So that's, yeah. I know I've been absorbing that stuff for the last 10 years um, as it became more and more into the forefront and available for people. Yeah. But man, like YouTube, I don't even remember YouTube being much of a thing when it came to like when I first started my business, it just wasn't much of a thing. And it just has blown up in popularity and same with uh, Facebook, even, you know, I, 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 it's, I'm curious. I had to look it up sometime, just see how many users were on Facebook in 2008 versus how many users are on there today. Oh man. I'm certain it's gotta be, you know, yeah, 10 90. times what it was back then. So yeah, more than that, more than that. Yeah. Group, groups wasn't even a thing on Facebook. That was not a thing. Like, so now anybody who's only been in business for, I don't know, 
eight years or so, maybe seven, eight years, like you had access to all that right away. A lot of information out there that you could just easily access, which, you know, that's awesome because hopefully you're skipping some of the challenges that I know me and Pete went through. And however, I see a lot of people out there still going through challenges. Well, so they're their own worst enemies. I, and we, everybody is their own worst enemy. I think the one person that you're going to have to challenge and, 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 and stand up to is yourself. Um, if, if, if you're going to go to that next level and, you alluded to, and you were talking about before the recording, you said, really good service. It doesn't even really exist anymore. And and we're seeing that. I mean, it started with the airlines. I don't know if you were much, much into f- flying when you're in your business, you don't fly much, right? You're out there. Right. No, I'm, doing uh, the I'm, I'm, I'm in my office or in a truck or on a roof somewhere. Well, I, I sold, <laughs> I sold my business in 2000. Okay. Yeah. And I remember because I, I went to work first for American Standard briefly, and then I ended up working for Lennox for many years. And they would fly us around. And so we would go to, you know, we'd have our our national meetings and we'd have dealer meetings. And most of the time it was a drive distance away, but a lot of times it was a flight. So you know, one year it was Las Vegas, one year it was Dallas, Texas, one year it was LA. And so it, it was kind of cool to move around and see parts of the world. But yeah, we saw, you know, I've been flying since I was a little boy because I'm the son of divorced parents. And my I lived in North Carolina. My parents lived in Dallas, Texas. My dad, I rather, my, my dad and grandparents. And so every year I flew. And so I've, I've watched the deterioration of service in the airline industry. And it just become down to these pricing wars, right? And I heard somebody say not too long ago, if anybody gets five stars, it's those guys because they they have to cut their costs, but yet they have to maintain these standards of safety. I mean, think about, you know, do you want to fly the cheapest flight, right? Of safety and and quality and and, and just all of this stuff that comes into the responsibility of that type of work. But um what was the point? The point was that service has just gone to nothing, you know, used to, you could speak up and get good service. And now, yeah. And I, and let's just, let's clarify just a little bit. Cause I know that there's, there's, and just like, you know, and so I'll just kind of clear the air here. Like there are, there, there's absolutely places you can go where the service is phenomenal. We all know that. However, think about just the majority of services, like just, you hit a drive through at Starbucks or you go through a you go through the drive through to grab some a snack on your way to you know a meeting or something like just think about some of that service think about the service you get when you're if you're looking for something in a store and you know not a fancy store <laughs> so so i think of like when i think of uh, you know excellent you know five star service i think like fancy well i'm not fancy like i don't i don't do like i i'm just it's just not in my dna i don't think it'll ever be in my dna no matter how much money i ever earn in my life i'm just i'm simple and so um thinking about just the types of service that that we see um it's not it's not every single place not every single business but man, I just remember back in the day when you go through any drive through for any reason and people are just like, at least say thank you when you handed them money. Oh, yeah. Now they don't even look at like you. Like you're lucky to get a thank you. They'll hand you the bag while they're talking to somebody inside. That, that's one. And of shut the door point. and not even say a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's everywhere. I, I feel like it's everywhere. So it's like in, you know, Midwest Kansas, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. Just put it that way. It may not be like that in every single re- region, just like all different markets are different, but it's that way here. And so, but not everywhere, but I still feel like, man, just a little extra, little bit of extra something that you can put on top, you know, of your service will, will make you stand out from the crowd. Yeah. 
Being able to speak to your customer, like say, tell them, Pete, thank you so much for calling us. I know you could have called just anybody, uh, but we really appreciate the opportunity to serve you today. Thank you so much. Like nobody says that, you know? So like, if you could just do something like that, I feel like, man, you're just, you're just going to, but of course you got to, it's got to be genuine. It doesn't have to be genuine. You really have to feel that. But I'm saying, that's what I'm trying to communicate to everybody, I guess, is to feel it. Feel it and then share that with the customer and they'll feel you. And I know Pete's got a whole bunch to say about this. So (laughs) (laughs) about about six thoughts kind of came and went, but yeah, (laughs) one of the things that I did kind of want to hang on to, and it's, it's a, it's a few sentences back was the difference in service that I have experienced. And one of the ones that I really, really miss was hardware stores. Because um, there was a big company that came into our town. It was called Home Quarters. This is back before Home Depot and Lowe's. It was home, well, Lowe's was around. And and they were coming in. And so we had this low price hardware stores. But there was a little hardware store in town. It was kind of out in the suburbs. And I would go in. You know, these places you go in and you could barely move through the place because the inventory is just so stacked. And these guys would run over to you and they would like, you know, what do you need help with? Well, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to run a drain line or I'm going to run, you know, electrical, uh, service or, or, or fix a roof or anything, you know, and they would walk you through and help you. Well, you need this. You need, have you got this? You need, you're going to need, and they just understood every, everything. And it was like an education going to the hardware store. And that was all just kind of, it just went away. And I, I, I don't, I don't think a lot of people that are listening to this have ever experienced this. The closest franchise that came to it was uh, Ace. Uh, Ace. I, is- I was just going to tell you the Ace. This is this is one exceptional store. It's not all the Aces because they're. I think they're like it's like a franchise, but they're still yeah. privately owned or something. Exactly the exactly. way they work. And right. so <clears throat> the one here in Augusta, the owner of that store, he man, I'm telling you, and he. I don't see him too terribly often, but he's that guy for one. He is that guy. So if he get, if he helps you, he is going to be, hey, did you think about this? Do you think about it? okay? Let's go on this aisle. Let's look over here. You know, he's that he's that guy. But their service is superior to any other store in the the entire city of the little city of Augusta with ten thousand people, um, probably most of Wichita. Yeah. So with 380,000 people or 420, where whatever we're out to now. Um, so it's like, I, that's crazy. You pick, you picked that. And then, then you even said ACE because. Well, they're small. Our, they're... This one ACE store is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so yeah, they stand out. I just wanted to throw a caveat. They're probably not the cheapest. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't look at prices when I go to stuff, go buy stuff like that. Well, when I you're looking at lumber, I need something. I got to go get it. So you're looking at lumber and you look at cinder blocks, you know, they don't have yeah. the space. Oh, and... they definitely are more for lumber. I can tell you. Are they? Okay. Yeah. But let's just say, you know, hardware, uh, like, you know, hinges and, you know, stuff like this. So, but what happened was is the big mega companies came in and they replaced all these small companies. And, and we've seen Walmart do this. We've seen, you know, the grocery stores did this years ago. And, um, and, and this is kind of what's happened. And it's unfortunate. Small businesses are really um, in, in a very difficult position right now. And I, I think our industry is very fortunate that they've not successfully done this. Um, they tried back when I was, in business in the nineties, they, they call them consolidators. And what they would do is they would go in and, and they'd buy up several heating and air conditioning companies that were relatively successful, put them under a single brand and try to manage that as a, you know, as a single entity. And they failed. But then all the people left and it just crumbled and fell apart. I'm sure. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and that kind of <laughs> stuff continues to happen with the private and equity, yeah. private equity investors today. And they're, they're buying. And then ultimately there's a, there's a conflict in in uh, stre- uh, a business philosophy between the owner that they asked to stick around for a year 
and, and management, and then they, it comes to a head and they end up firing the owner. That inevitably that's just what they do. And then what happens that it goes to, you know, hell in a handbasket, as they say. But since service generally sucks, what does that mean to us, Kelly? It means opportunity. Hey, Amen. That's what I was looking for. It means opportunity. It means there there is um, such a tremendous opportunity that, like, I see it. You guys have seen it too. Some of the big companies, possibly in your area, who are doing a lot of volume, they they main they're you know, especially during the hot summer, like they don't have. <clears throat> There might be a few uh, employees that work there who really stand out, who are really yeah. great people who do a great job. But the majority of them, you have an opportunity to really stand out yourself as a small company, to be different, to spend time with the customer, to do a thorough job, like all the things we've always we've we've talked about multiple times on this podcast. So, um, but it is it's a huge opportunity. But you have to be different. You've got to stand out. Part of that is your branding, yes. Um, like we started the, this this episode off talking about where, yeah, the branding is important. I'm not going to say it's not. It, it's huge. But should you not start a business just because you don't have that kind of capital to, to, to spend or to invest in a brand? No. The answer is no. If you've got ambition and heart and hunger and you've got a winning attitude and you know your stuff, and you're good with people, you can do it. You can do it, you know, you can get a long ways, even just with no, please don't not have any stickers on your van to, to let people know who you are. But I'm just saying you right. could. Yeah. If you were that good, you could. So. And they're out there. There's companies that have been in business for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years, and they don't even yeah. advertise and they're just backed up, but that's because of their service. But circling yes. back around to the branding part, um, you know, a brand by definition is what people say about you when you're not in the room. It's it's their opinion of you. And what this person, whoever it was, and I, I didn't see that post, so I don't know who you're talking about. And that's probably a good thing. Uh, I think what they were suggesting was that if you don't take control of what people are saying about you, then they, they're, they're just going to say whatever, uh, you know, whatever their impressions are led uh, uh, ultimately lead them to. And we can take control of that by positioning ourselves as something special. And I, I'll drop a name. Um, one of the guys I work with, uh, and he's in our mastermind group, uh, he rebranded. His name is Mark. And um, Mark Portuesi, he's outside of uh, Chicago, Illinois. And, and uh, he worked with Kick Charge over there. Um, What's his name? Uh, Antonelli, and uh, came up with a really nice rap. And it was he, he had like this bullseye instead of an arrow hitting the target. It was a wrench, and it's called on the mark. And mm, I've seen I've seen his I've seen him on social media before. I've noticed that his branding. So, and yeah. so what he did was he went in early on. He was very small. He didn't have a lot of money, and he went ahead and sucked up and made that investment. And he wrapped those vans and he had tremendous success. But what I what the what I wanted to share was with a little story that was after the fact. We had in 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 one of our mastermind groups another business owner who I think he was in Michigan and he was gonna rebrand his vans and wrap rewrap everything, which you know, you know that's an investment. You did that. It's a lot of money. Yeah. And yeah. Mark said, You better hold on, you better be ready. As soon as you change that, the phones are going to go off the hook. And that was his personal experience. So by putting it, by raising your image, your brand, your perception to the to the people out there, if it's done professionally, and guys, don't cut corners on this. If it's done professionally, uh, it's not only is it going to raise the amount of calls, the amount of attention that you're going to get, it's going to be out there advertising for you every day. I'm talking about wraps now. Every day, every time you go through a neighborhood, it's, it's, it's going to be reminding people of who you are and hopefully what's special about you. So uh, I just remember 
Mark over there. And Mark's a great guy. He's a young business owner. He can't be more than about 34, 35. And uh, he's probably one of the smartest kids I've worked with. Um, he yeah. just, he, he's really smart. He really, really gets it. And he's yeah. just taking his stuff to the next level big time. But yeah. Yeah. I've got a couple of guys that um, blow my mind that are in our group too, that are just super sharp guys that are just, and they're just doing so well. So early well, in the game. That? Don't you love that? So I mean, early don't you... in the game. Like I got one, one dude is like, um, like he's going to, yeah, he did his first year in business. He wasn't even, it wasn't even a full year. I think he started in April or June, maybe June. I can't remember exactly, but he did like six, 700,000 just, just in his first, those first wow. um, six or seven months in business. And then this year he's going to surpass a million dollars. Like he's, he's probably going to do closer to 1.5 is my guess. And then um, another guy is getting ready to, you know, he just put an offer in on like a $200,000 shop, like six, 7,000 square foot shop. Nice. I'm just blown away. These guys are doing so good. It's, uh, yeah. it's really cool to be a part of it. So I get that for sure. Like it's, um, that's why we do it. Right, Pete? Cause that's it's that I, right there. No, it's, it's really like, cool. It doesn't, you don't have to like, it's not that these guys don't bust their tail. Like they're work, they're hard working dudes, but like they're, that's that's okay it's it, like it's it's one thing to work hard it's a whole nother thing when you to work hard for like eight years till you just feel like you don't have anything left um versus working hard for three three or four years really hard to build this thing up as quickly as possible so you can step back and um one of the guys is is that i just talked about he's already stepped back like because he's you know he started with no shop no vehicles um, now he's got, I don't know, five feet, four or five vehicles. He's got a shop is his, uh, fiance quit her job, came to work for the business. The, um, well, let's see. I don't know. They're just, they blow my mind, dude. It just blows my mind because I know, <clears throat> I know what can happen when you have the right information. I'll just put it that way. And you work hard. These yeah. guys have worked very hard for what they what they have, well, but they had the right information and they're using it and they're they using their business every day, and it just gets better results faster. So yeah, it, it it's huge. Yeah, you, the stars definitely have to align, um, and you know, several things. Okay, the thing that I didn't do, and and you know, a lot of us just don't have any control over is our demographics. Do I want to set up a business here? Do I want to set up a business over there? And if we do a little bit of research on that, we'll figure out, okay, what kind of business do we want to be? So if I want to be a premium level company, I probably need to find a premium level clientele and, and go do business over in that area, not where I happen to live. That was my mistake. Um, I made the same mistake. But you mentioned at the very beginning that service sucks, and um, or I, I quoted you from before the recording. We yeah. Yeah. I said it. I said it. Service does suck. <laughs> and so I think that a lot of us being technicians look at that as, well, my service doesn't, you know, when I go in there, that equipment is popping and my customers love me. And they really feel like that that is true. And from their perspective, it is true. And if you think that your customers love you because how, how friendly they are to you, and they really understand the value of what you bring, you may be incorrect. You may be reading into more than what's really going on. Kelly, how would you describe what what we mean by service? I mean, the, you, you're, we're making the equipment happy because we're good service technicians, but what does service mean to the homeowner themselves? How... How is that different? What are we really talking about when service sucks? So I think as a society, I believe that at this point, we're incredibly spoiled. And that's it's just the new normal. It's just how it is. You know, like you can, with one touch of a button, you can order a $5,000 whatever and have it delivered to your house tomorrow morning. So there's no, 
for one, there's the delayed gratification is like you used to at least have to get in your truck or your or your vehicle <laughs> and drive to yeah. the store right. to go get it. Like you, you could you you don't have to leave your house ever if you don't want to. You can be waited on hand Crazy. and foot if you have the money. You can have meals delivered to your door four times a day, whatever you want. So for one, I believe that there's a little bit of there's transparency now that didn't used to happen. You didn't have internet with all the all your parts listed of what was at, you know, Johnstone or at um Amsco Supply or wherever, whoever your your supplier is. Like you didn't have the access to go look at parts on Amazon. So you have to think of all the different dynamics that have changed since just in the last, I'm going to say 15 years, drastically changed. And on top of that, you know, every single year from 2008, when I sold equipment, all the way up until today, every single year, we just about for every single pl supply house, we had price increases. January, February, somewhere around there, you're getting a price increase. Well, now we've had multiple, multiple price increases just in one year. So I just think of all these different dynamics that have changed. The transparency, people can go find stuff online. Um, I talked to an owner today. He was talking about how the customer wanted to know what is your cost on the equipment versus, and what are you charging me to put it in? Um, because I'm sure he can go online and find that same furnace. It's not going to include installation, but it's going to give him what he's going to perceive as an idea of what he's being charged versus what he perceives as buying it for. Um, so they're all, there's, th these are all like some of these things are price structure things, you know, as far as like, what, what does the customer get for what they pay for? So, and back to being spoiled, like we all, everything, the normal, like you, if something breaks and you call somebody to come to your house to fix it, they just expect you to fix it. That's already, that's already expected. So there's no value created there. Even if you were a really good technician and, you know, nine out of 10 technicians who came to look at this same problem wouldn't have found it or fixed it as fast as you. You see the value in that as a technician. They don't. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're here. You're here to fix the unit. That's what I called you for. Yeah. So in order to go above and beyond that, there has to be something else. Otherwise, there is no value created because that's what they expect. So to answer your question without being pre-prepared or anything for it, that's what comes to my mind is we we have to go above and beyond. And that term just gets thrown around very loosely. Yeah. So I think we have to be very specific. We have to think, you know, I always say. If you were to if you were to step up like in. As far as like positions i don't even know how to how to call it like just if you're the, the higher you climb on the ladder on this if, if you just to break this down into four steps as you climb this you make more money first you're working maybe working with your hands like you're using your muscles then you are managing so now you've got to learn some communication skills some people skills chances are in a manager position you're going to climb the ranks a little bit you're going to make a little bit more money Next time, next thing is speaking, getting better at speaking, communicating, you know, um, your message. And then at the, then at the top of this very short, high, high level overview would be thinking. Thinking is the highest paid skill there is. So if you can sit down and just think about what could make us different, how can we communicate what we do differently? How can we think about what we do differently? How can we package things differently? How can we reinvent ourselves? I think if you think about those things, and the, I don't have the answers to those, by the way. I'm not like saying, and it's easy for me to sit here and say, how could you do things differently? You know, but 
this is the job for the owner. We have it's you. You know you better than anyone else. You know the type of service you deliver. You know your attitude. You know what you want your brand to represent and stand for. You know all these things. You have your core values. Yeah. Even if you haven't defined them yet, you know what they are. So how do you communicate that to the customer to make yourself stand apart from anyone else? Because we can't just be like everybody else and come out and just fix the thing. Let's because say. there's no there's no value in that. That's why people. That's part of the reason why people get upset when the price is super, the price is what we have to charge in order just to make a living and earn a profit in our business. But there's no there's the value is not there for the customer. So that's that's all I have. Yeah. So I want to hear what you have to say about this. No, that's great stuff, man. So uh, I, I go back to the to the hardware store, the little one that was out in our small town in that experience versus going over there and standing at the big the big store and looking down the hallway and trying to get somebody to come over and help me, and they knew less than I do. Um, and I think that maybe uh, for most of the listeners here, you guys probably know your way around a hard store, hardware store better than the employees. Okay. But by contrast, one time um, I bought a new camera because of this kind of stuff, and I'm, uh, I wanted to get a special lens. And so we went over to a specialized camera shop, and they had this old guy in there, and he would, you know, he would ask questions. What, what kind of camera do you have? Do you have this? How are you going to use it? And he, he's, well, you know, you could do this. And then he starts talking about all this stuff, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, I didn't didn't know this stuff. And it's, I just thought I wanted to buy this lens and be done with it. But there were all these other variables that he would bring up because of his experience. And he was, he had a way about communicating that it didn't, he wasn't condescending. He didn't, was it like he knew everything and I was a dummy. It kind of made me feel like, you know, I was the hero and he was just guiding me, you know, and you know, what, what are you trying yeah. to Oh, you, you definitely, if you want this impact, you want to do this. And, you know, and I ended up buying a, a, a tripod from him and a 50 millimeter lens that I needed because of that clear uh, image with the, the, the blurred background combo. Um, it was kind of cool. So that was an example for me with my mindset. I'm more of looking at it from a technical standpoint, but my wife, by comparison, she would appreciate like you coming out to her house and you're very polite. You're asking for you're putting your shoe covers on and you're asking permission to go in different areas and uh, you're involving her and you're, you're, you know, the, the drop cloths, cleaning up, vacuuming, explaining and, and asking questions. Is there anything else yeah. that you can help with? Yeah. Hey, I got my ladder out. Is there anything you want to get off any high shelves or any light bulbs change? You know, just little, little things that make it personable. And for her, you know, it, it it's it's a different. You know thing what you know what I'm hearing. What are you hearing? You know what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that's words of affirmation. That so that's that's how she feels appreciated and like she's being taken care of. Is you're you're asking her question, you're involving, and then for you, I'm hearing acts of service, which is here. Let me show. Like we're gonna do wow. this project together. I want to know what I don't know, but I don't want you to, I don't want you to make me feel like a dumbass because I don't know it. I I, I don't know this stuff, but don't belittle me. Don't talk down to me, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and that was the, the, the guy that this had, but, but there's other pieces too, Kelly, you know, um, yeah. For example, I had a customer that they would call me out and pay. This was my first civilian job in Dallas, Texas to change their light bulbs. And I'm like, you know, why me? And he says, well, you know, you, you handle every, you handle this other stuff and we like you. So we just, you know, and they, it started because they had a wasp nest inside their package unit. I hate wasps. And I wouldn't go up there and he brought me a beekeeper's hat with the net. <laughs> I'm serious. And I had to go out there and kill the wasp nest and everything else. But, um, it, but they just love that and it just turned into this relationship. Well, service right now is definitely on the decline, but I think if we had to come around to a, a an 
a catch-all descriptor, it would be the customer experience. Don't you? It's not the equipment yeah. experience, the customer experience. No. The equipment already knows you, know your stuff. But yeah. the customers interpret quality by a different metric. You know, they, they're looking at stuff like how polite you are, how clean you are, you know, how yeah. professional you behave. And it, so if you look professional, talk professional and, and, and take and just put drop costs and stuff, well, in their mind, the work that they're doing is superior. It's technically better. Yes. I mean, that's the way they process. So, so that part of it the is the way we all process stuff, you know, right? it, it, when you really think about it, it's, but it's counterintuitive for us as technicians. My customers know me, they love me, they knew they do it, they know I do a great job. But in reality, they just are buying into your enthusiasm. Sales is a transfer of enthusiasm, right? And so possibly your certainty. You know, if you know your stuff, they're certainty. buying into your certainty, you know. So exactly. Yeah. And but unfortunately that works for your competition, and they're absolutely certain they're doing a good great job with beer can cold, and they're just not doing a good job right. but they think they are and a lot of they they have their own following and so that's that's part of it but you know this kind of stuff will take care of itself over a period of time if you do really good work but if you offer quality service high-end service and this is who you are as the business owner because you value this now you have to create a strategy so that your team will continue to do to provide this even in your absence, because they're not owners. They, they have to be motivated as well. And maybe that motivation comes from certain key characteristics that are fundamentally, uh, they have in common with you, including your core values. You know, we're just happy yeah. people and we like what we're doing and therefore we're happy. But if I'm miserable and I hate cuss, I hate people and, but I work on equipment and it's going to come through. You know. Absolutely. So this is this goes back to because I've been kind of fascinated with this because I know that I made a lot of mistakes in my business. There's no question. I don't I don't ever pretend I didn't. I made a lot of mistakes, but I always did the best I could. And I was striving to do good. Like I wanted to do good. It meant, it meant a lot to me to do good, you know, in the way I led, in the way our business operated, in the environment that was created in the in the workplace. I wanted all of those things to be as best as I could. Sure. Um, sure. And so I've, I've been, you know, I feel like somehow I missed the mark at times, different times. And you just have a lot of time to reflect after you sell a business. Yeah. I know you did a lot of reflection yourself. I'm certain of it for the first couple of years you reflected about like, well, what, what if I would have done this? What if I could have done that? I sure like, did. Not that I don't have any regrets or anything. Cause I, I always did the best I could, but I've been obsessed with like learning more and more and more about business, you know, just because I, I, it's what does it for me. But uh, so anyhow, what the reason I said what I said when you were talking about how some people's acts of service, some people words of affirmation is because I just got certified today in the, uh, the five languages. Um, it's called the five languages of appreciation at work. So I'm going to, I'm, I, I'm actually going to be a facilitator of those. And I will give some trainings here in the very near future. I, I'll get a facilitator's kit in the mail. Um, it's all delivered online um, or I could do it in person, but anyhow, it's part of the reasons I've searched for this stuff is because I'm still fascinated. I want to know like what makes people tick. How can we, how can you completely change your culture from something that's just people don't feel great about to something they can really enjoy coming to work for. You know what I mean? Not that we had a horrible culture by any means. I don't feel like we ever did, but could it have been better? Yes. And I've got a good friend that has a phenomenal culture. And so just to share just a couple of little tiny snippets that I've learned is that I always thought it was my job we have external employee or external customers, which are customers that we go fix their heating and air conditioning system. And then we have our internal customers where that's your employees, that's your co your colleagues, your, your coworkers, your teammates. And I always thought that the leader's job or somebody who's put in that position to lead or manage, it was their job to make sure those coworkers are taken care of. 
to make sure that they were being appreciated, field appreciated, and, you know, had support the support they needed. And what I've learned is that it's not, some people don't even want your time or a, you know, not everybody wants words of affirm, you know, words of affirmation, like telling, telling you that you did a good job from the boss. Sometimes they just want it from their, their coworkers. Sometimes they, and so when you build a culture that has the coworkers understanding, because what happens, what I've learned with this whole experience of doing this, this deal is that you can miss the mark by having a group meeting and saying, Pete, Hey, let's everybody give a hand round of applause for Pete. He he sold, you know, 15 million disagreements this month. Good job, Pete. Well, that's words of affirmation. I'm telling you, good job, but I may miss the mark. That may not be important to you. Uh, uh, it, words of affirmation might be your language of appreciation that you want, but I may have done it the wrong way, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, so understanding how people want to be appreciated is part of it, but it's also part of it for everybody on the team, because what they found with research is that there are sometimes you want to know when you work with somebody, they, you know, your buddy comes to work, you're riding together today, think it's going to be a great day. Well, they're having a bad day for some reason. And you want to know how you can pick their pick them up. How can I bring their spirits up to have a better day? Well, if you know how they like to be appreciated specifically, then you can do those things to make that person feel appreciated, to feel better about themselves. So it's hard to it's hard to explain like this without like taking you through the training, but it's 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 good. So yeah, I can I can speak Makes to that sense. first. First of all, congratulations on your certification. I think that's awesome. Thanks. You're taking the time and investing in yourself, and I think we all need to be doing that. But uh, fundamentally, is yeah, what you guys should be hearing is, man, do I really need to hear all that? I mean, you know, I just want to run a business. Well, <laughs> it's kind of weird, but the very thing that you downplay and you just want to move past may be the difference in in, in taking you to that next level. And so, as a business owner you're going to have to bring in all these new uh, uh, skill sets and insights and understandings. And, and um, yeah. there's nothing better than to learn from people who have been schooled on it or, or maybe had the firsthand experience. But I think fundamentally um, I remember reading the one minute manager back in the eighties and it was said something a lot to, to the effect of there's nothing any more unfair than to treat unequals equally. And I remember reading into that, but different people are motivated by different things. And you may sit there and praise one person and it turns around and turns them into a prima donna. Well, you know, the boss is oh, great. Yeah. Hey, I'm important. You know, and it actually works against you of, of all things or, or, or there that's, was one that's guy happened used, to me multiple times. Right. And so there was one guy I used to work for work with, he was the head of the sheet metal shop in Dallas, Texas. And he hated getting all that attention. And, and the boss called him said the head, head of the sheet metal shop and his face turned red and he just, he did not want that. He's fine one on one, but not in front of groups. And so, exactly, you just said it. Yep. Some people, that's how they want to be appreciated, or or that's how they want praise is one on one. You know, some some of them don't want to be acknowledged in front of a group. So some yeah, people want the group; they don't want one on one. It's it, so it, it's it's all about finding out how yeah, they. It's it's part of it's like being a part of something, as opposed to being you know patronized. Maybe. Yes. You know, I just like being here. I, you, don't, you don't need to, you know, blow wind up my skirt. I, I I get it. You know, you know, this business is work, whatever. But, um, but some people do need that encouragement to get them to that point. And so you kind of have to have it, it. It's being a business owner is being a bit of a daddy, right? You've always well, got everybody kids. wants appreciation. That's the bottom line. And, and that's, so if somebody says, Oh yeah, I don't need, I don't, I don't need, um, What's wrong, man? <laughs> you got my pants. Some clip broke on this thing that was holding it up. But anyhow, um, so somebody might say, I don't like, you know, I don't need all that. You don't need to tell me I'm doing a good job, blah, blah, blah. Well, but then they actually light up when 
you oh, just yeah. spend a little bit of quality time with them. And then they start telling you about, look at this, look at what we did on this project and blah, blah, blah. And they just start lighting up. Well, that's, that is still showing appreciation to that person. It's just a different form. And so it's about learning the different forms of appreciation that people want and then making sure that that's what they get. That way it hits the mark. It's on the mark, right? <laughs> so it's on, on the, the mark, mark instead yeah. of missing mark. the target 100%. So, so anyhow, um, I remember just real, me. So real quick why. story. I mean, everybody's buttons are a little bit different, but I remember yeah. one, this is just always stuck with me. I had started a new job. It was my, it was actually my very last job before I started my business. And I went to work for, it was a refrigeration company. So they had set a condenser with, that was one of those condensers where it was coils and fans only. And the compressor was inside of a mechanical room. And we were running yeah. these inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths, a uh, big discharge. Um, and then, you know, still big liquid lines, but we were running all these discharge lines and so everything had to come in. You had the 45s and, and this, that, and the other. And so I'm cutting and brazing and just putting all this stuff in. And the owner came out. His name was Doyle Criswell. And, uh, man, I hope he's still out there kicking. But uh, uh, just a long time ago. And he looked at that, and he said, that's good work. I said, thanks, boss. You know, I'm just keep going. He goes, no, no, no. I'm critical as hell, and that's good work. <laughs> you know, and he, he wanted me to know that he's a perfectionist and he's sitting there and he's putting a tape measure on there and he says, everything's level and it's cut just right. Look how these turns just go together. And, you know, and I'm playing it down, but that made my day. In fact, I, yeah, I'm telling you <laughs> whatever it is, 35 years later, I'm still remembering that, you know? Yeah. And anyway, um, so it, it, you take this assessment and it tells you your primary language that you like to be appreciated in. Okay. It, and then it tells you your secondary language, because if you can take two languages, combine them, yeah. it has a bigger impact with the person, with yeah, any yeah. individual. I get that. And then yeah. it tells you, because here, here's another thing is that we have blind spots and the blind spots are when let's say words of affirmation, just that's not for Pete. Right. But it is for Kelly. Right. And because it's not for Pete, he thinks that's not going to do any good. So you tend to ignore the very thing that would make me feel appreciated. <clears throat> because you'd you you don't see it that way. Yeah. So that that's that's the brilliance in in this this whole thing. Yeah, that's called projection. We do that with our customers as well. We just project our own values on it. That's like, you know, these employees that you have. Oh, I'm going to save you a bunch of money. The boss will try to sell you a new system, but you know, I'm going to fit because they're projecting their values. Yeah. Of, let's call it um, uh, financial scarcity because they, you know, they're making, you know, $30 an hour, $50 an hour. And you're talking to somebody who makes, you know, six figures uh, times two. Right. And, you know, they don't care about that. They want, they have a different mindset. And so, yeah. Projecting our values and 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 and, the, and understanding and stuff on the other people is very common. We assume they think like we do, but but they don't have the same background, experience, education, interest, or needs. And so we do have to be learn how to shut up and say, you know, this is uh, you know, th th these are the options that are available to you. What do you think you would be interested in? And that's how you sell, by the way. You don't sell, you consult. Yeah. Yeah. You just um, be a professional. That's what I call it. So you, you, you even called it that earlier, just being a professional, having a clean truck, having a clean uniform or looking presentable, the way you speak, the way you walk, the way, the way you um, communicate, you know, towards your customers all makes a yep. big difference. And, 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 it's and subconscious, the... subconscious, like you don't, they don't even, you do it too. Like even you, you, you perceive somebody as being professional or not professional. Sure. 93% of all communication is nonverbal. So yep. all that other stuff matters. You bet. Well, Kelly, we said we're going to shorten these. Yeah. Try to keep it to 45 minutes. I think we passed that. Did bit. you have anything else to kind of bring all this together for, for those who are listening? Maybe, maybe an extra little, little nugget that you can throw in there. What are you thinking? Half of the people on your team, any team, want words of affirmation 
is their number one language um, that they like to be appreciated in. Um, so I'll say that, but, but it also means 50% of your team, that is not what they want. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. And then um, back to customer service and everything that we talked about today. I hope you guys will take this to heart. I say that all the time, but please listen, do something with it. Use it because you can stand apart. I don't care who you are. You're unique in your own way. So how can we bring that uniqueness to the surface in a way that, you know, doesn't get weird? <laughs> like, I'm not telling you to be weird, but I'm telling you to be unique in your own way that can that can be of value to your customer. So, yeah. And people never resent you for being too friendly or, 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 or too good. They resent you for, for the opposite. And so and make it costs your, nothing. Those two things cost nothing. It, yeah. Just, just a little effort on your part, but maybe the, here's a tip inside of every scrout, scrawled face and browed uh, or whatever the expressions are, you know, serious face that your customer may have behind those faces are a vulnerable child, if you will, of a person who is at a total disadvantage in your presence. And they're trying to be, you know, be, be, be a certain way. But if you'll just yeah. be kind to that inner person and smile and ignore the face, explain things, slow down. Are you happy? Can we take care of everything for you today? Is there anything else I can do for you? And look, Pat, try not to look at the, the, the hard face, you know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm an engineer. I know, you know, they're they're just human beings and they're at a disadvantage and they don't want to be any more vulnerable than they already are so they'll they'll project these type of things ignore it talk to that inner person and treat them like is there somebody you actually care about maybe a younger version of of the person you're looking at try it see if that works okay so i i have to i have to add one thing here <laughs> <laughs> because the Kelly caveats, <laughs> there is a show. Um, and, and I, I'm hardly ever on TikTok, but I, I got on there. Some, some, probably somebody shared something with me and I wound up on TikTok. And then this, um, like anyhow, this show it's called, um, seatbelt psychic. Right. And this guy is supposedly, you know, I, I, it's hard to believe reality TV shows, but He's supposedly just picking up a random stranger and then he gets a reading from somebody who passed away and he, he starts sharing some things. And what I realized about that, cause I watched a couple of episodes cause it's pretty intriguing to watch um, if it's real. Um, and here's the thing is any single person that got in his vehicle, if he said the right thing, they were, five seconds away from tears. Isn't that crazy? And that really brings like the, the human connection into everything. That's what it's immediately what I thought is like, my God, like they're just people like everybody yeah. that you're dealing with, any customers, everybody you pass, no matter how tough they are or how, if they're acting like a jerk or if they're friendly, they could be seconds away from tears. They're just people. They you have feelings know. and emotions. And, and, uh, so yeah. High technology. Yeah. Isolation. Um, what do you call this? Uh, not confrontation, but, um, but positioning of, uh, of battle between the, the customer and the salesperson, you know, all, all these dynamics. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, um, is just human beings and, and, uh, they've had, you know, you don't know what they've been through. And sometimes, uh, just an act of kindness is really, awesome. if you'll just hold your state, this is a psychological term, hold your state. And I'm here to help that inner child that inner that, that innocent person and speak to that person and let them be as gruff as they want. That's just who you are. Um, it, it, it it may not be acknowledged in the present, but it's always appreciated after the fact. So um, just uh, be good. Uh, don't service that customer service. 
that customer um, as if you're looking to your grandmother and servicing her, maybe, you know, Absolutely. and, yeah. and uh, the service part will take care of itself. And how do you teach that to your team? Well, that's episode, another episode coming up another time. <laughs> so, so anyway, so much for 45 minutes. We, we still hit our hour, but um, yeah, uh, it was worth it. But great job, Kelly McKay, Mr. Certified or Certifiable. Certifiable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to, man, it's mainly just because I want to, I, I, it's, I've, it, I'm intrigued by it, but I also want to help other people who, um, you know, not make the mistakes I made. It all goes back to that, man. That's half the battle. Yeah. Yeah. You don't make and, the same mistakes and, and manning up and, and, and doing the stuff that you don't feel like doing. And, and, you know, that's where the success is from. You're going to have to follow a new regiment, one you're not comfortable with, but that's how we grow. It means uh, man and uncomfortable man up or whatever it is these days. You do the unfamiliar, <laughs> do the unfamiliar, enlarge, take who you are. That's not me and enlarge it. Keep adding stuff to it until it's who you are is if it's massive, awesome person. Cool. Well, great job, Kelly. Um, and on behalf of Mr. Kelly McKay, the HVAC millionaire, my name is Pete Ramsey, HVAC greatness. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe to both of our channels and follow us because he's got content over on his channel that I don't have and vice versa. And it's all about helping each other. Cool. See yeah. you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. See you guys.